We're live. Okay. At this time, will all sergeants please start the recordings? John, for some reason, I asked for a co I don't have a co host yet. Sorry about that. Likewise. Uh, sergeants, that's fine. Just start the recording, please. Uh, for some reason, I asked for a uh, to do that, Chief. Chief, it's, it's not allowing me to do that without the uh, co host. Time for that. You're co hosted now, I believe. Uh, not yet, John. I'm sorry, give me a second. It's if I can't co host. Hold on. I have Hope Perez. Do you mind muting yourself? Sure. Thank you. All right, we all should be co-hosts now. Okay, thank you, Joanna. Start your recordings, please. Yep, recording to the computer. Recording to the computer, all set. Go to the cloud and process. Backup is rolling. And good morning and welcome to today's remote New York City Council hearing for the Committee on Finance. At this time, would all panelists please turn on their video for verification purposes. To minimize disruptions, please place all electronic devices to vibrate or silent mode. Thank you so much for your cooperation. We are ready to begin. Thank you, John. Uh, good morning and welcome to today's Finance Committee meeting. I'm Minority Leader Steve Matteo and I'm chairing today's Finance Committee hearing on behalf of uh, Chair Drum, who was unable to be here this morning. Uh, we've been joined by Council Members Kozowitz, Felice Adams, Rosenthal, Gredenchik, Powers, Brooks Powers, Dharma Diaz, Lewis Moya, Ampri Samuel, Van Bramer, Ayala, and Cornegy. Uh, if I missed anyone, I'll, I'll get them uh, I'll the back. Uh, today, the committee will be considering five items a bid-related resolution, two bid-related introductions, and two property tax exemptions. Let's start with the bid items. Resolution 1616 sets forth May 27, 2021 at 9 a.m. in remote hearing, virtual room one, as the date, time, and place to hold the public hearing considering intro 2291, which would, one, extend the boundaries of the Madison 23rd Flatiron Chelsea bid which sits at the intersection of the districts of the speaker, council member Powers and council member Rivera, increase the bid's annual assessment and change the method of assessment. Next, today we'll be holding a public hearing and a vote on intro 2267 and 2268, which would authorize a change in the method of assessment for two bids, the Flatbush Avenue bid in council member Eugene's district and the Queens Plaza Court Square bid in council member Van Bramer's district, respectively. Lastly, we will have two property tax exemptions First in Seagirt, senior housing in Councilmember Brooks Powers District would receive a partial 40 year Article 11 exemption to preserve 151 units of affordable senior rental housing. Second, we have Penn South in the Speakers District, which would receive a partial five year extension of its Article 5 property tax exemption to preserve 2,820 units of affordable cooperative housing. In addition, per HBD and the co op's request, the resolution would approve an increase in the carrying charge to replace an expiring capital assessment previously approved by the council. The council members are supportive of these exemptions. Before we call for a vote on these items, we will hear public testimony. First, we will hear from Deputy Commissioner Blaze Backer from the Department of Small Business Services on the items pertaining to the Flatbush Avenue bid and the Queens Plaza Court Square bid after he is sworn in by council. Do you affirm that your testimony will be truthful to the best of your knowledge, information, and belief? I do. Thank you, Mr. Backer. You can proceed. Thank you. Um, good morning, um, members of the Finance Committee, um, Councilmember Matteo, uh, Chair Drum and Absentia. I'm Michael Blaze Backer, Deputy Commissioner of Neighborhood Development at the Department of Small Business Services. I'm joined by Roxanne Early and Stephen Lee, Director and Senior Program Manager for the Business Improvement District Program. 
I wish to express our support for the local law authorizing amendments to the district plans of the Flatbush Avenue Business Improvement District and the Queens Plaza Court Square Business Improvement District. SBS oversees and supports bids in the district plan amendment process as part of our scope of regular program services. Bids seek to amend their district plans for a variety of reasons, including to add or remove supplemental services, change their method and formula for assessment, or add and re or reduce their boundaries. For changes that do not impact their boundaries, bids must form an internal steering committee to lead the process, conduct comprehensive outreach for members of the bid, and obtain support for the proposal from local, elect local elected officials. The Flatbush Avenue bid wishes to change its method of assessment and scope of program services to account for changes in the district since its creation in 1988. First, the proposed bill will amend the method of assessment from solely linear front footage to a combination of 60% from front footage and 40% from assessed value. When the bid was formed, the most prevalent building type was the three or four story walk-ups with residential units or storage spaces above ground floor retail premises, single story buildings, and a few large banks and theaters. However, since 1988, taller and denser buildings have begun to be built and commercial condos introduced. So the bid feels the current front footage method of assessment is no longer a fair assessment of its member, member properties. The proposed amendment will result in a more equitable distribution of the assessment and we believe will result in a fair assessment of district properties. Second, the district plan will include additional supplemental services provided to the district to include, but not be limited to, sanitation, public safety, marketing and promotions, holiday lighting, economic development, administration and advocacy, and other additional services. This update will bring the district plan into alignment with current district plans across the bid program in terms of its supplemental services provided. The Court Square Queens Plaza bid wishes to change its method of assessment and to account for changes in the district since its creation in 2005 and expansion in 2017. The proposed bill will amend the method of assessment from its current formula, a combination of front footage and assessed value, to assessing mixed-use properties at 80% of assessed value and the square footage rate, and commercial properties from a combination of front footage and assessed value to a combination of building square footage and assessed value. When the bid was formed, neighborhood leaders determined a combination of front footage and assessed value was the most equitable means of assessing properties. However, since 2005, the district has changed and the bid feels that the current method of assessing its properties is no longer a fair assessment of the properties. As more properties in Long Island City are built as mixed use rentals, more of the overall assessment is borne by fewer commercial properties under the current method of assessment. The proposed amendment will result in a more equitable distribution of the assessment and we believe will result in a fair assessment of district properties. Both bids provided opportunity for discussion and comment on their proposed amendments for membership and adjusted the proposals accordingly. In addition, as required by law, the two bids published a notice of the public hearing at least once in a local newspaper having general circulation in the districts, specifying the date, time, and place of this hearing and stated the proposed modifications to the district plans. In addition, the two bids certify they have mailed a letter to property owners informing them of the date, time, place, and purpose of this public hearing. These district plan amendments will not impact the tax or debt limits prescribed in the bid law. It's important to note that this work was completed in 2019 and this legislative approval was delayed during the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. The incredible toll of the pandemic has only heightened the crucial need to create a more fair, fair and equitable assessment formulas for Flatbush Avenue and the Long Island City Partnership. And we are pleased to support this legislation before the committee today. At this time, we're happy to answer any questions you might have. In addition, representatives from the two bids are on hand to provide any further clarification. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Backer. Um, we've also been joined by Majority Leader Cumbo. Um, if any of my colleagues have any questions for Mr. Backer or the bids, uh, please let me know. I don't see anybody's hand raised. So if anybody has any questions, just let me know now. I don't see any. Um, so thank you, Mr. Backer, I appreciate it. Um, thank you for your testimony. Um, we also have testimony from the president of the Penn South Co-op, Amber Nicosia, on their property tax exemption application. Ms. Nicosia, you will have three minutes for your testimony, and you may begin when ready. Time starts now. Good morning. Uh, I'm Amber Nicosia, the president at Mutual Redevelopment Houses, also known as Penn South. Penn South is a limited equity affordable housing cooperative in Chelsea in Manhattan. It's organized under the New York State's redevelopment law and it's supervised by HPD. Penn South's contract with the city provides tax abatement in exchange for income restrictions on our occupancy. 
We provide affordable housing to 5,000 low and moderate income New Yorkers, many of whom are senior citizens. We are the first NORC in the country, naturally occurring retirement community. Our community depends on the income from our commercial tenants to keep our carrying charges low for uh, the majority of our population. Because of the financial devastation that COVID has wrought on these businesses, we're looking for ways to maximize our savings where possible. One of the best options is to refinance our existing HUD insured loan with another HUD insured loan. Uh, because the current interest rates would yield significant savings to Penn South. As a condition of the refinancing, HUD requires us to obtain an extension from the city of the property tax exemption for an additional five years from its current date to expire on June 2052 to June 2057. Some of the loan benefits would include helping us recover from the lost rent uh, from our commercial tenants who've been impacted by COVID. And we would be able to lock in a low interest rate on a 35 year self-liquidating mortgage and paying off the mortgage over a longer period of time, 35 years will reduce the pace at which our apartment prices are increasing, making it more affordable for those who are on the low to low middle um, occupancy requirement. In providing insurance for a uh, new mortgage, HUD requires us uh, to amend our contract with the city so that they're minimizing their risk. We are here today asking city council to approve a ninth amendatory agreement that would satisfy the HUD requirements. So in summary, we're asking for an extension of our city contract for an additional five years to 2057. The replacement of our expiring HVAC assessment with an equivalent 9% carrying charge increase, which will keep our apartment prices from increasing. And the approval of up to 15% in carrying charge increases for future use in consultation with HPD. Thank you for your time this morning. We hope the council will adopt these changes. Thank you, Ms. Nicosia. I appreciate your testimony. Um, uh, does anyone have any questions or comments from my colleagues? I don't see any hand raised. Um, just double checking. Okay, so with that said, uh, those are all of today's items. Uh, seeing and hearing no questions, we're going to ask Billy Martin, the committee clerk, to call the roll. Good morning, William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on finance. All items are coupled. Council member Matteo. Aye. Thank you. Kozlowitz. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Thank you. Cornegie. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, I just want to say to um, Blaze Backer that he stole my opportunity to use the word abstentia in a sentence. Uh, <laughs> I, I... Thanks, Rob. <laughs> Thank you. Council Member Gibson. Good morning, colleagues, Chair. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Combo. Okay, we'll come back. Councilmember Rosenthal. I vote aye and not in absentia. <laughs> Grodenchik. Aye. Adams. Good morning, and I vote aye. Ampri Samuel. I vote aye. Ayala. I vote aye. Moya. I vote aye. Powers. I vote aye. Thank you. Thank you. Lewis. 
permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you so much. I vote aye on all. And I, would, I just wanted to share that I support the assessment for the Flatbush corridor. Flatbush has experienced a number of changes. The services that would be inclusive in this amendment would be crucial to these small businesses. And it will definitely preserve the small businesses in the area. And there's no better leader to carry that out than Ms. Collins. And I look forward to seeing the much needed changes and support for the small businesses in the area. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you, Dharma Diaz. I vote aye on all. Thank you, Brooks Powers. Good morning, I vote aye on all. Feliz. Good morning, I vote aye on all. On all. Thank you. By a vote of 16 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, all items have been adopted by the committee. And Mr. Chair, we are awaiting one more member. Thank you, Billy. We're going to hold it open for uh, Majority Combo for a few minutes. Um, when she gets on, then we'll let her vote and then we'll adjourn. You did a great job, Chair Matteo. Oh, thank you, Councilmember Powers. You're all lucky I didn't put in property tax reductions. In <laughs> I wish you had. <laughs> Hey, Rob, are you still on? Uh, this I mean, is, you, excuse yes, me, this is Chief Sergeant Turner, so still live. Thank we're still live. you. Billy, can you call on the majority leader, please? Majority leader Cumbo just uh, signed back on. Good morning, Council Member Cumbo. Uh, oh, hold on. We're waiting for her audio to connect. <laughs> I think majority of combos connected now. Yes, Billy, you call on her. You're on mute. Number of combos, roll call vote committee on finance. I vote aye. Thank you. Thank you. Final vote in uh, committee on finance is now all items have been adopted by the committee 17 of the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. This meeting is now adjourned.